today i'll be presenting on a topic effect on the uh, paper effective technical communication which is from civil engineering department uh, third semester the topic is information design and development designing and developing information involves the processes of information management a cycle of acquisition development distribution and review the cycle of information management can be described in the following activities first of all is creating technical content producing technical document preparing world ready content assessing the technical document under creating technical content involves both information design and information development the following processes broadly describe the steps for creating technical content analyzing the need for technical content which involves defining the audience purpose and context for the content so that the appropriate information can be presented in a language that's accessible to users and with an approach that's meaningful to them designing technical content which involves choosing the general format of the content such as a help system or a series of questions and answers the medium or media of communication through which it will be published structuring the content a process called information architecture and preparing a detailed plan for presenting the content that is a process called information design the third is developing technical content this involves writing drafts of the content seeking feedback on it from subject matter like experts matter experts like engineers programmers scientists marketing specialists and editors and revising the materials to reflect the comments received the next point comes producing technical content producing technical content involves information delivery this is the process by which material is prepared for publication for print materials this could mean preparing materials that can be printed or used on a printing press for online video and audio materials this once meant preparing a master copy of the materials from which duplicates were burned onto dvds or cds now source files are often stored in cloud based repositories or hosted on local servers published and maintained in which the material is duplicated or otherwise made available to its intended users and ongoing inquiries from users as well as brief updates to the technical content and managed the next is preparing world ready content preparing world ready content ultimately involves taking content that was created in one culture and changing it for use in another culture this process includes translation localization and globalization next is assessing the technical content assessing technical content is the process of reviewing technical content against a given set of guidelines to determine its effectiveness this process is quality assurance which involves editing creating style guides reviewing testing evaluating quality and ensuring copyright protection assessment of technical content most commonly occurs both before and after publication assessing before the content is published before publication the assessment activities consider the accuracy of the content through reviews by technical reviewers the ease with which people are likely to be able to use the content which is called usability and performed either by usability experts or by observing people using the content the quality of the writing through editing in which spe specially trained professionals review materials to ensure that the co content follows guidelines and is formatted for publication next assessing after the content is published after publication the assessment activities consider the accuracy of the content reader satisfaction with the content readers ability to use the content as the author intended it the overall writing quality the value that the content adds to the organization that published it as a result of users performing the tasks intended with it next we move on to the five types of technical documentation 
technical documentation exists in every business yes every company even if you think nothing you do is overly technical there is something that when written out ends falling one of the different types of uh, falling under one of the different types of technical documentation there are several different kinds of technical documentation in this post we are going to look at the five most common and explain what they are and show some of the common mistakes made when creating one technical documentation number 1 that is internal development document an internal development document use is within your company mainly the file is to help pro product developers plan enhancements or maintain software this report allows new developers pick code created by someone else and continue working on the project since this is an internal document there are no standard naming conventions however you might find these records called notes for program x or even pseudo code common mistakes the most significant error is not having this type of document available at all developers are often protective of their code but it is necessary to pro necessary to keep a project moving not noting at all parts of the code you or your developers might think they will remember everything but it too much but if too much time passes they may forget the classes function features and architecture that have designed technical documentation number 2 product documentation product documentation describes product documentation describes all the features of the item it explains what to use honey number 2 it explains what to use the product for when or why to use the elements nahi samajh aaya samajh aaya continue customers who use the product need information on all the features available to them many will use just the bare opinions but that does not mean that you should not inform them of the availability The naming convention for this type of technical document documentation includes handbook or complete reference guide. An excellent example of in-depth descriptions would be one of the dummies guides to books. These feature every possible use of products and software titles to help users. Next is technical documentation number three, that is troubleshooting documentation. Bull book. Of course, you do not. want to believe something can go wrong with your product however with every product or software title can have a problem you need to get out in front of the issues offer a document that describes ways to diagnose the problem the design for this type of technical documentation is uh, for use by product engineers and customers who do not mind getting their hands dirty and fix it themselves however you do not have to make this public if you want them for your engineers only commonly you commonly you name these articles troubleshooting guide technical documentation number 5 that is knowledge base like the troubleshooting document in knowledge base is an area where users can find common issues and how to fix them however the file does not go into the detail on how to figure out what the problem is instead it takes the most common support tickets submitted by users puts them in a central location and gives the best way to fix the problem um next we move on to the system development life cycle phases so here is a diagram depicting the phases of system development life cycle where we find after the planning there is an analysis and then a design then comes the implementation and after implementation there is a testing and integration and finally maintenance the system planning the planning phase is the most crucial phase step in creating a, a successful system during this phase you decide exactly what you want to do and the problems you are trying to solve by defining the problems the objectives and the resources such as personal and costs studying the ability of proposing alternative solutions after meeting with clients suppliers consultants and employees studying how to make your product better than your competitors and so on next is system analysis the end users requirements should be determined and documented what their expectations are for the system and how it will 
perform a feasibility study will be ma made for the project as well involving determining whether it's organizationally economically socially technologically feasible it's very important to maintain strong communication level with the clients to make sure you have a clear vision of the finished product and its function next is design that is a system design the design phase the design phase after a good understanding of customers requirements this phase defines the elements of a system the components the security level modules architecture and the different interfaces and type of data that goes through the system the implementation and deployment this phase comes after a complete understanding of system requirements and specifications it's the actual construction process after having a complete and illustrated design for the requested system in the software life and development life cycle sdlc the actual code is written here and if the system contains hardware then the implementation phase will contain configuration and fine tuning for the hardware to meet certain requirements and functions in this phase the system is ready to be deployed and installed in customers premises ready to become running live and productive training may be required for end users to make sure they know how to use the system and to get familiar with it the implementation phase may take a long time and that depends on the complexity of the system and the solution it presents next is the system testing and integration bringing different components and subsystems together to create the whole integrated system and then introducing the system to different inputs to obtain and analyzing its outputs and behavior and the way it functions testing is becoming more and more important to ensure customer satisfaction and it requires no knowledge in coding hardware configuration or design testing can be performed by real users or by a team of specialized personnel it can also be systematic and automated to ensure that the actual outcomes are compared and equal to the predicted and desired outcomes last is the system maintenance in this phase periodic maintenance for the system will be carried out to make sure that the system won't make won't become obsolete this will include replacing the old hardware and continuously evaluating system's performance it also includes providing latest updates for certain components to make sure it makes the right standards and the latest technologies to face current security threats these are the main six phases of the system development life cycle and it's an iterative uh, process for each project it's important to mention that excellent communication level should be maintained with the customer and prototypes are very important and helpful when it comes to meeting the requirements by building the system in short iterations it can guarantee meeting the customer's requirements before we build the whole system next we move to the four types of organizational structures so these are the diagrams of the <clears throat> just a minute of the four types of um, structures organizational structures the first one is the functional structure here you see the diagram under the ceo we have the marketing sales and services and we have the subdivisions under each next is the divisional market based structure where we have the under the ceo we have the commercial division the residential division and the government division and its subdivisions next is the matrix structure where we have the ceo along with the marketing sales services and that they are laterally forming the different uh, subheadings next we move on to the factors affecting information and document design okay so we move to the um, factors just a minute effective document design okay the people of the world we interact with today has been becoming more visual than ever before driven by the rise of social media and digital technology 76% of millennials claim to be visual learners according to a recent survey the art of document design concerns about how the physical appearance of your document appeals to the audience it is important to pay attention to keep in mind as readers do not read only the printed words on a page but also the visual presentation of the text furthermore a good document should effectively communicate as well as translate the main ideas of a document to the audience 
first is white space white space can be defined as the clear areas on a page document which have no text or graphics the use of balanced amount of white space in our document design is an essential factor as it helps the reader to process the dig and digest the text efficiently for instance imagine yourself reading a complicated data with lots of detail white space will guide your eye to focus on the important information consequently white space should appear in the margins headings columns as well as indentations written cues the importance of written cues is to assist the readers to find specific information quickly